So Aryun, you have said to be a member of the Yayel. The Yayel are the fifth hybrid race, right? Yes, I am. And yes, as the Yahyal or Yah Yael in full, we are the fifth race in the lineage of what you understand to be the grey human hybridization. Could I ask you some questions about this? Sure. Well, so far I am mostly familiar with channelings of the Sasani through other channelers. They are said to be the third hybrid race in the grey human lineage. Correct. And so now I wondered if you could share some similarities and differences between yourselves as the Yayel and the Sasani. For instance, do all hybrids agree on everything? Or can what we hear from you guys through one channel be very different from what we hear through another? Since you are both hybrid races from the same grey human lineage, I would expect the information coming through the different channels to be somewhat the same. But I've experienced this isn't always the case. How does this work? Alright, thank you for this. When it comes to the last part of your question, there are several aspects at play here that all have to be taken into consideration. First, there is the filter of the channel itself. We, as hybrids, at this point in your evolution, communicate actively with many of you in a wide variety of ways. The verbally translated version that you may have been witnessing through this or any other channelers over the years are but one route of exploration in our overall communication with your planet. Focusing on this route or methodology, however, it would assist you to remember in such cases you are witnessing a blending of our energy with the energy frequency of the channeler itself. Simply put, there is the individual energy frequency signature of the channeler and there is the energy signature frequency of, in this case, myself and my people. In moments such as these, when the type of translation that you call channeling takes place, the energy of the channel and my own have harmonized in such a way as to have, in a sense, created a third entity. The blending of the two. This is the Vitika Arjun or Arjun Vitika entity with whom you are now speaking. This is neither the one nor the other. It is truly the two now represented in one form containing gradually fluctuating percentages of both ideas depending on the subject discussed and the relevancy for either the one or the other to be more fully presented in the third at any given moment. Some of you, when you tune in deeper with this blended entity, can pick up on the energy frequency of my species, the hybrid, quote-unquote, or Yahyel energy signature, if you will. Some may even be able to receive that segment of the messages offered to you, to you all, that we choose to convey to you telepathically. These messages are often hidden in tonation, energy vibration, and if relevant, in movements or seemingly random sounds made by the channel rather than actual spoken words. Simultaneously, you quote unquote hear our energy quote unquote translated into a human language that is available to the channel and through the belief filters of the persona self, which are always present to some degree in any channel. If ever you would meet a medium claiming to be 100% filter-free, this would mean you would be speaking to us directly, and no channel would have to be involved in the first place. As that is what 100% filter-free actually means. Only I am 100% me, just as you are 100% you in any given here and now, or else there would be no differentiation, energetically speaking, between this and the other. Of course, at the level of the one, source, we are all one. It is this and that. But since you ask about the differences and similarities between us and our brothers and sisters from the Sasani, we will answer you with as much detail as possible. As on that level, like you, we too have chosen to co-create and explore life in a way wherein we are both unique individuals and, simultaneously, all interconnected. 
One of the great benefits of the channeling setup is that for many of you, even though the entire idea of channeling may still look odd to some, seeing a fellow human being sharing these type of ideas with you, it allows you to feel more at ease in taking in the information at your own rate of understanding. In other words, you don't actually have to quote unquote believe in us in order for you to benefit from the information given to you in this way. This way of translating our energy offers a very non-intrusive manner to introduce certain concepts and ideas to humanity. And it also allows us, in turn, to learn a lot from you, how you think and interact. And of course, it allows us to observe if or whether at all you choose to do anything with the information we offer. Does this matter a lot to you, whether we do anything with what you say? What you choose to do with the information given in this way, though this will forever remain completely up to you, of course, to us and many watching along from the sideline of your collective evolution, is indeed of a much greater interest than whether or not you choose to believe in our actual quote-unquote existence. Okay, and why is that? In a way, it could be said that we are just another form of placeholder to allow you the excuse to tune in with your own higher self. For other people, this placeholder could be a friend, a family member, a teacher, a movie or a book, you name it. The universe, your greater self, will always find the root of least resistance to bring any relevant information to your awareness. This is not just depending on us. And the messages that we offer to you in that sense fundamentally are not new. We merely remind you of that which you may have chosen to temporarily forget. We, in a sense, reflect to you what you already contain. And just as you would perhaps be glad for a friend when he found a great passion or love in his life, for instance, it brings us great joy and deep gratitude when you decide to truly embody this remembrance in your actions and your words. You see, to think that you understand something remains a energetically rather passive state, but to truly know is to embody, is to do. True knowledge is embodiment and therefore it is grounded in action. It is you, in a sense, showing yourself you truly got it and no longer need us or anybody else to fully realize a certain aspect of your being. What this means for us is that you, by embodying more of your true natural beingness, open up to a new level of communication where you can see us as family or friends, if you wish, as equal. And this is invaluable for any relationship, if it is to have a balanced future. But even if you were to choose to continue your journey without any further communication with us, it would still bring us joy that you have gotten to the point where you have. Every single time any being in creation experiences the energy frequency that you would label as expansion or insights, this causes a ripple effect that benefits all others. So your growth brings us joy and gratitude, no matter what you then, in the future, choose to do with this information gained. And whether or not we will be a part of that future. We come from unconditional love and do not expect anything in return. Ah, okay. Whoa, I need to listen back to this. And you can, if you wish. But let us return to your previous question. You asked about our similarities and differences compared to the Sasani. Ah, yes, please. <laughs> so, like we said, in comparing quote-unquote data from the service layer, the channeling aspect is the first thing we wished to point out to you as there simply are no channels that are completely without filters in your dimensional reality, the information coming through may sometimes sound as if we have different opinions about certain things. This, even though we as Yahyel 
Shahiel and Sasani are generally speaking pretty much on the same page as you call it. The reflections of this may differ depending on the medium or channel through whom our energy is being translated into your language. Secondly, it may help to realize that the entire hybridization program was and still is an evolutionary journey onto itself, which is also still unfolding. The energetic difference between the first hybrids that you understand to be the future humans, many of you would now identify as the greys, and ourselves, the Yahyel, is significant. Ah, yes. This journey, in its totality, spans thousands of your years and has taken many, many generations on both ends to come to where it is today. Now, if you were to ask whether we as Yahyel agreed on every single idea the greys used to have, for instance, then we would say no, we do not. But we are able to see how all of their ideas had a place in their own and eventually our own bigger journey. There was a lot to learn and we will dive into this quite a bit deeper with you at a later moment if you like. Oh yes, I would love that. Then we will, but for now we shall say that there was a lot to learn and our communication with you at this point is far more advanced in comparison to what it was in the beginning stages of this project. Now this was a learning curve on both ends. The growing curve of channeling individuals on your planet, for instance, shows your own willingness to reach through the fabric of your own inner knowingness into the multidimensional overlap of our mutual existence. And on our side, we have learned to understand the makeup of your planet, your species, and also the spiritual themes of humanity to a far greater depth, which allowed us more efficient ways of interacting with you. Now, jumping ahead as to keep it short, it could be said that the younger hybrid species, the Sasani, Shia Yael and Yah Yael, are most closely related when it comes to active interaction with your planet at this point in time. We all, in this, do have our own focus areas and expertise, though some overlap. All of us have our own first contact experts, and many of these interact and cross-connect with each other. Okay, whoa. One of my personal mentors, for instance, is a member of the Shah Yael. He interacts with humans and has taught me much on how to do so myself. Though he does not blend with their energy field as I do with the channel before you, I learned a lot from him. I also regularly join on a team with, amongst others, many others, a female member of the Sasani. She is a dear colleague with deep knowledge of the human psyche. Ah, okay. So many cross connections. Yes, there are many, many. Aside from these hybrid cross connections, we also communicate with interstellar alliances that hold many more species, many of whom are involved in one way or another with the evolution of your planet at this point in time. And then we have, of course, our own evolutionary timelines, such as the one, quote unquote, where the Sasani have evolved on to the Shakani, offering them yet different roles to play in the overall picture as now they have begun to move into a less physical state of being. Oh, I actually had a question about this. All right. As I understand, the Sasani, or Shakani then perhaps, have three artificial moons surrounding their planet. And as I have come to understand, these each provide for a certain vibrational energy on their planet that is beneficial to their entire species. Yes. There are these moons, and yes, this is a basic understanding of their function. Okay, now my question is, what would happen if these artificial moons were turned off? So, what would happen if they no longer emitted these beneficial vibrations? What would happen to the Sasani, or even their planet in that case? I have wondered about this ever since I first heard about these devices. Alright, well, at this point, for the Shakani, it would not matter all that much if these moons were quote-unquote turned off, as you say. 
as by now, linearly speaking, they have come to understand they contain these vibrations themselves, and no object or device is needed to provide this for them. At earlier stages of their evolution, though, turning them off, as you say, would have resulted fundamentally in a slowing down of their evolutionary path. It would have contained more and deeper challenges, which then would have delayed the evolution of both the Shayel and our own species as Yahyel in turn, which then might have resulted in us not being able to stand by you in the major transition of your own planet the way we are able to do now. These moons still fulfill a part as you may have learned, some portion of the beneficial vibrations are offered to your own planet via the reflector satellite of your own moon for those who resonate with that idea and wish to harmonize with this option. This is the short version of that idea. I never would have guessed so many timelines are interwoven. Indeed there are. And you have time for one more tiny question. Okay, then lastly, I just have to ask this. I would like to know about the amount of fingers and toes you guys have. <laughs> fingers and toes. Yes, like how many fingers and toes do the Greys have, and then the Sasani, and then the Shayel, and then you guys. Is this similar to us or would it be much different? Okay, you have charmed us with your enthusiasm, so we'll dive into this one for you. Yay! All right, are you ready? More than ever. All right. Understand there are exceptions to these ideas, as there are exceptions in your own species to this. Though you would call them rare, you are aware that some people focus into a human form with one or a few extra or less fingers or toes, offering some variation to the mix, so to speak. For a while, this entire idea was greatly unstable in the future humans that you now have come to know as the Greys, and such differences surfaced much more frequently for them. This had to do with the atmosphere of their version of Earth at that time, which contained great disbalances. These were, in turn, reflected in the physical appearances of newborns as well. After some generations, they found a form that worked for all and that was, well, declared, let's say, the new standard. This solution for a more stable form was gradually introduced via genetic manipulation and eventually cloning. We can go deeper into this at some other time, but for now we will just focus on the abstract form that reflected this decision. This is the form in which most of you have encountered them whenever you may have had multidimensional contact with any of them. In that form, they chose to have three strong fingers and one strong thumb on each hand. Four digits in total on each hand. On each of their feet, they had three strong toes. Though there are lineages or time tracks where they chose to only have two. Only two? Yes, though in that case, perhaps you wouldn't even call them toes anymore, but more of a split at the end of their feet. Grays from both of these timelines have intersected with your version of reality as you now perceive it. Though, like we said, the ones containing three fingers and one thumb on each hand and three toes on each foot have been encountered much more often. All right. Then, as the hybridization project began, and they started to blend their own genetics with yours, the first hybrids that lived grew to be a little bit taller. Their hands and feet at this stage still remained mostly the same, again with some exceptions. Okay. Then followed the Sasani as the third race in the hybridization program, the Shahyal as the fourth, and ourselves the Yahyal as the fifth race. Along this trajectory, a gradual evolution from three to four fingers per hand has taken place, the thumb adding the fifth, as for most of yourselves. The number of toes gradually increased as well, but sometimes still varies. Even in our own species, depending per family lineage, 
we as Yahyal count mostly either four or five toes on each foot. So some of you guys have only four toes on each foot? Well, I wouldn't say only. Four is enough for those who decided to choose that shape for this exploration. And two times four makes a pretty eight in total. <laughs> okay, sorry, I didn't mean to offend anyone. None taken. I was just surprised, but I think I'm getting used to the idea already. All right. Well, take all the time you need. <laughs> it was our pleasure and honor to speak with you today. Goodbye and namaste.